Welcome back to In a Tiny Garden. Finally, the weather's turned and it's been blaring sun, no rain in sight, and everything wants to go out. So I'm gonna be dividing it over two episodes because there's quite a lot to do. And so in this first episode, I'm going to be clearing the bed ready for the tomatoes. So the purple spreading broccoli are gonna come out. And we're also gonna take a look at what we planted a couple weeks ago because it's been dev devastated by one of my allotment nemesis. So I'll have to be re-sowing those as well. And then I'm also gonna plant out my second batch of lettuce seedlings, finally, and that'll be done along the shady side of the peas. There's also loads of seeds that you can be sowing in June. So a lot of successional things like carrots and well, all sorts, the sweet corn, beans, um, squash. There's still some time. June's a really great month to kind of get your successional sowing in. Also, since the weather's been super sunny lately, the strawberries in the tiny garden are ready to eat. So the broad beans are doing really well. They're doing better than any other year I've grown them, but the black fly has finally found them. And luckily, at the same time, the ladybirds have found them too. So we've got loads of black fly, colonies of black fly, and then a ladybird army has come. And bumblebees are loving these as well. So it's gonna make me feel less guilty about uprooting the purple sprouting broccoli that they're all over to plant my tomatoes out. So what I'm doing now, just to lessen the effect of the black bean aphid is I'm taking the tips off because all the black bean aphids are concentrated at the tips. And so I just nip the tips off like this. I've got all the black bean aphids in there. I just make sure there's no ladybirds. And if there are, I put them lower down on the plant and then I'm gonna compost that. And what it does, you can see ants on there too, which uh, milk the aphids for their honeydew. They actually bite the wings off to stop them flying away. So nature is interesting. I see a pea and bean weevil there too. <laughs> anyway, that's what nibbles the edge. The pea and bean weevils, you have, take little notches out of the leaves like that. So the other thing that taking the tips off does is it means that the flowers further down will start developing the broad beans uh, quicker. So we'll get harvest quicker, um, which is what I want. So yeah, win-win. There's aphids this way. This area here is where I want to plant out my first tomatoes. And I've taken about a month and a week longer than I would normally to plant the tomatoes out. Firstly, because we had such a terrible May. The weather was cold and rainy and hail. Um, and also because the purple spreading broccoli took a really long time to sprout and so we were cropping, cropping, cropping and then we were away for a few days and it flowered in those few days and it is absolutely covered in bumblebees. So I felt really guilty to get rid of it. So I've been kind of trying to keep the tomatoes happy whilst they've desperately needed planting out and you'll see they're a little bit yellow on their leaves because they're really losing nutrients. They're not doing too well. They should have gone out quite a, quite a while ago into the ground or into larger containers. I've tried to wait until the bees go home at night before chopping this down and then I'm going to lay a nice thick layer of mulch, maybe three centimeters, mulch uh, compost, well rotted horse manure and compost on the top and then I'm going to plant out the tomatoes. So we'll do that soon, very soon. And yeah. So the other thing that's happened at the allotment is a bit of a fail are the brassicas. So oh, we planted them out a few weeks ago and the slugs have been worse than I've ever known them to be. Um, yes, we plant under the weed membrane, which can encourage them because they can hide underneath at night and then come out to eat the foliage at night but I've never had a problem like this before. We went away for three days and I came back and basically the brassicas have been wiped out. So I am going to be re-sowing them and then planting out when the plants are a little bit bigger. So it means that my brassica is gonna be delayed. There won't really be a succession now, but it's not too late to sow the brassica, to re-sow the brassicas. 
And also back in the tiny garden where we planted the kale and I have had kale seedlings, we had a really bad hail storm and basically all the stems broke and I've just had a look and what was still left, the slugs have gotten. So the slugs are at the allotment and they're in the tiny garden getting all the tender stuff. So never mind, that's what gardening is for you, lots of patience, and I'm just gonna re-sow my kales. So just a bit later, and they'll keep us going over winter still. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I win and not the slugs this time. So I said that all the brassicas got eaten by the slugs, but the calabrese seems to be coming back a little bit. So I'm gonna leave them in the ground and see just while the other ones are growing on. And they haven't really touched the kohlrabi. So I still have four okay looking kohlrabi, a bit weathered, but uh, yeah. So I'm also gonna plant out my successional batch of lettuce and I'm going to do it as it's been really, really sunny lately. I'm actually gonna do it in the shade of the peas, just next to the peas down here. One, one long line rather than a square block like here. So I'm going to plant the second batch of lettuce in the shadow of the peas here, which have just whoop, started to flower all different colors because we planted so many different varieties. The aphids as well have found everything. So we've got slugs, black fly, and green aphids on everything, including this lettuce now. So I'm just doing a bit of a squish before I plant it out. And I've also been patrolling the adult lettuce because they've got some as well. But you can see there's a little ladybird on the chard. The ladybird army has arrived. So the lettuce has been going really, really well for weeks. And we've had, I don't even know how many picks from each one. So I pick it from around the outside and kind of pull down with my hands, not with a knife. And that doesn't leave a little nubbin for the slugs to come after. So it's been really, really good. Um, there have been a few aphids, but I've just been picking them off. And yeah, so this is probably, I don't know, the fifth harvest that we've had from each one. So they're gonna start to go bitter soon as they set seed, which is why we planted these. So these will come up next to the peas as the second lettuce harvest. So the spinach has been really, really great as well. We've probably had five harvests off of it. Uh, but it is starting to bolt. So you can see here, it's just getting ready to put a flower head out. So that's the flower head that's starting. And once those start, then the spinach goes quite bitter. So this is towards the end of our spinach. But we've got a second crop that's ready down the other end. So it's the big moving day for the tomatoes. These are all going out to the allotment bar two. Uh, normally I keep a few back in the tiny garden just in case of blight and that kind of thing. So just choosing which ones to keep back. But in the meantime, I thought I should tell you about my little experiment. Some of the tomatoes I took out of those coir pellets and some of them I didn't. And for the ones that I took out of the coir pellets, I used bigger labels. And I just was going through and choosing the best ones of each. And then I went to look at the labels that I had left over and they're all small labels, which means the tomatoes that I took out of their pellets once they started, uh, sort of ripped the compostable baggy thingy off, did much better. So that's right, I'm not gonna use those little pellets ever again. <laughs> so let's go to the allotment. So this is where the purple sprouting broccoli used to be and now we're gonna plant tomatoes. So yesterday after I got the brassicas out, the purple sprouting broccoli, I twisted them out. So I left quite a bit of their roots in to rot down and add goodness to the soil. And I also put a nice uh, thick layer of well-rotted, very well-rotted horse manure on top. So the tomatoes will really like it because they, as you can see, have been really suffering in these tiny little pots and their leaves are screaming out for more nutrients. The bed next to the Brassicas. If I start there, I've got about 190 until the main path. The RHS says to plant 45 to 60 centimeters apart for the tomatoes, but that's way too much in my opinion. Um, think of how many you can fit into a grow bag, usually about two, but they say you could even fit three. And this is in the open ground. So it's good to leave lots of space between them because of things like blight. Um, so good airflow is good, but I'm gonna go with about 40 centimeters. So that means I can fit five or six down this way, five or six down that way, then I can probably fit a few more in here. That means I'll have just a few left over and I think I'll plant them on the other side of the peas. So I'm making quite a deep hole 
because I can plant once again much lower than you think. So I can bury the stem and they're still going to grow new leaves from this, uh, new roots in fact, from this section of the stem. So I'm going to put it in quite deep. So this is Brad's Atomic Grape, one of my favorites. So just before I put the last layer of soil in, I'm going to water them and kind of puddle them in, which will settle the soil around their roots as well. So normally I just use bamboo canes, but this is the first year I'm trying these metal ones. And it's quite nice because they twist. So instead of me tying ties every kind of few days as the tomatoes grow up the bamboo cane, I can just uh, twine these round the twist. And that should keep them in place. So the next one to go in is my second favorite, I think. I mean, it's hard to choose, but snowberry. So this one was so prolific last year. It's quite pot bound on the bottom. So I'm just gonna tease the roots a little bit out so they explore their new space in the ground. So ideally I don't want the leaves touching the ground either. So it's kind of a battle between which leaves do I take off in order to plant it more deeply. But I think I'll just take off a bit of that leaf so it's not touching the ground. I'm putting a bit of soil around the edge, cuddling them in, and then backfilling the hole. It's important to label the plants because there's quite a few of them. Almost 20. I'm just placing some of these out before I finish the rest to make sure I've got enough space. And I'm planting the cherry type tomatoes a little bit closer together than the beefsteak ones. Beefsteaks probably do 45 and the cherry is about 35. And this one is Ruthja going in and it's a nice little red big cherry tomato with a little point at the end. So this is the Black Beauty, which is quite a popular one, one of my faves. And it's winning the race. Look at that flower she's got already. And this is how I'm coiling them around. So far, so great with these uh, metal poles. I only sewed one Northern Lights, so this is the one that had the small label in it. It's looking a bit sorry for itself, but it's a beautiful tomato, so hopefully it comes up. And then this one is Wagner Blue Green, which I didn't have that much success with last year, so hopefully I get something tasty this year. So this one is Costoluto Fiorentino, which will have big, heavy red fruits. And then this one, I'm not sure if it's green zebra or sangella. I really don't know. So as careful as I was with labeling, I'm just keeping both those in. We'll see which one it is. It'll be quite obvious because sangella is a small yellow one and green zebra is a medium sized green stripy one. So this nice, big, healthy plant is yellow brandywine. So really big tomatoes and delicious yellow. These ones are home safe seeds. This one's Thai pink egg tomato, which are, well, pink and they look like eggs. They're about that big and really, really beautiful. I didn't find they were that tasty last year, so I hoped this one wasn't going to do very well because I sowed it really late. But classic, all the plants that I sowed, all the seeds I sowed really late are the best looking plants because of the weather. So the ones I sowed earlier got sick and tired of being in their pots and uh, needed to go out sooner. So hopefully this is tastier this year.
This one is black crim, which I can't remember what, ah, yes, black crim, really pretty. I think I only had one tomato on it last year. So hopefully better luck this year, but they are red on the top and black on the bottom and kind of crinkled, a nice heritage variety. And the last one in this bed is Berkeley tie-dye green, which is beautiful. So hopefully we get a couple of those. They're quite big. And because I'm growing them outside, I stop it early to get at least a few fruits. But I'll show you later on about that. So end of the evening now, this one's Tigerella. I'm just hiding on the sunny side of the peas. We've got the lettuce on the shady side of the peas. And then this one is Sangella. And then I'm gonna plant Cosmic Eclipse, which is really fun, kind of tie dyed, all different colors, quite dark. And then the last one at the end there, Spoon, which are really teeny tiny. Um, one truss would actually fit on a little teaspoon. They're so small and it gets really tall. So I've got a nice big bamboo cane for that one. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. There will be a Beyond the Tiny Garden episode out really soon, either the next one or the one after. And so watch out for that. And if you enjoyed what you've seen so far, you can subscribe down here, or if you wanna watch previous episodes, they'll be up here.